What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to CCS Week 4. We got Goldfish Gaming taking on Iconic Severance. And uh, we're already into this pick and ban phase. My name is Rod Chains. I'm joined by Elsa the Queen. And uh, Elsa, you ready for tonight? I'm absolutely ready. I'm excited because this is a little bit of a throwback matchup that we have uh, for everybody tonight with Goldfish Gaming obviously coming back after narrowly missing the playoffs last year in the CCS. And then against Iconic Severance, who, you know, you might not uh, recognize the name, but they've rebranded from Lemon Citrus from last year. So they're a returning squad as well. So really excited to see these two teams that were actually vying for that last playoff spot last year come against each other. And as, as we kind of go through some of the bands here, seeing some sort of particular picks being banned out, Mundo stands out in particular as that is pretty much the one trick champion for Peanut the top laner for Goldfish Gaming. And with Thresh banned out last, I was talking to Raichans about Talia being an important champion in this series, but it looks like that one's going to be skipped and it's going to be the Zeri probably B1 here for Goldfish Gaming. Yeah, I think this makes sense. You know, with the Jinx being banned out, obviously Zeri rises in the priority. A lot of people are playing Jin as well. Vayne uh, is the, you know, straight up, favorable matchup i've seen people pick into zarius so we could see farachi taking up this vein in the bottom lane it's not one of their you know comfortable champions but it still is something that we could look forward to and we'll see what the next picks come through aphelios is going to be the choice instead and i think this makes a lot of sense because you know if, uh farachi is actually undefeated on aphelios so far this season in the ccs yeah, definitely. And we've just seen how Aphelios is a really big power pick. You already mentioned right change the Jinx being banned out as well. So kind of these hyper carries are some of the biggest um, in CCS as well as just League of Legends as a whole right now. We also see the Lulu being picked up by Iconic Severance, which I do um, like, not only because Lulu pairs pretty well with Aphelios, giving it that additional um, kind of ability to stay alive, but also a good takeaway from the Zeri. But with Goldfish Gaming going with the Alistar instead um, for Light's Genesis, that is going to be definitely a different sort of pickup. We have seen him play the pick before, and it does provide that strong engage potential onto the Aphelios. Um, we'll have to see if maybe they try to pick up a jungler or something like that to pair it with. Um, and with the Diana coming through, definitely could go to the jungle to Masi. Also could definitely be headed to the mid lane for Okami Hiazo. We've seen him as a player that is really flexible. So um, just a nice little strong champion that uh, doesn't give away too much of the team comp here from Goldfish. And Iconic's going to answer with the Olaf. Yeah, I, I mean, Diana is very strong right now. I think this champ is really, really crazy, um, especially pairing it up with someone else who has, you know, a circular ulti of the sort. A lot of people are running the Diana Yasuo combination right now for mid and jungle. It's very, very strong. Um, obviously, you know, that does rely on your mid laner actually playing the Yasuo, and Akami's not, doesn't seem to be the most comfortable on that champion. So maybe not going to see it this game or this series but still something to look out for first ban for iconic is going to be taking that aria away who just actually received nerfs this patch yeah it has been kind of again also on the top of the pro meta so it makes sense that it's been taken down a peg but um has been something that's been heavily favored by okami hiazo so it makes sense that they want to take that off the table um and here actually hovering the aurelia or sorry i'm so sorry not the aurelia ban the fiora ban this is something interesting i wanted to talk about because um the top laner yoey or aka bad vibes for iconic severance is a fiora main and goldfish gaming tends to exclusively pay, play tanks on the top side so i like that one being banned out in right chance you already called out the yasuo that one being taken away as well um and i, I wonder almost one benefit of picking up this diana at this stage in the game is kind of just forcing that yasuo ban because even if uh okami hiazo isn't a huge yasuo player just getting that one out of his hands is Certainly always going to be helpful um, to just kind of prevent that combination. So before we see, we're going to see the next ban come out right now. And then we'll we'll have to see if Iconic, if they're more comfortable blind picking for their mid lane or their top lane here with this next pick. Yeah, and interestingly enough, you know, with Tali on the enemy team, Goldfish kind of just saying, yeah, go ahead and take, the, take your one trick. We don't care. But instead, it's going to be Karma locked in blind for Iconic. And I think this ch is pretty pretty good pick. I mean, it can go top or uh, mid. And it's also, like, absurdly easy to... Uh, absurdly safe. Also, one thing I want to mention here is that uh, Okami could actually be taking this Zeri into the mid lane here. You can see the Ziggs hover. And uh, I know that Dirt is very, very comfortable on the Ziggs. Has played it four out of the six games that they've played in CCS this season. And there you go. Ziggs going to be locked in. So I do expect the Zeri to actually be going in the mid lane. 
Yeah, and this is actually something that we saw them do um, last week as well, or actually earlier this week against uh, Zeal, just flexing this area into the mid lane. Okami feeling comfortable on that one, especially after you see the Karma locked in. You know, we could see some shenanigans with Karma top as well, but we're going to assume it's mid in this game as Singed is kind of the last thing that's left up for Peanut. Also his Gragas, which is something that he's been playing as well, um, but Singed is going to be the blind pick here. So definitely an interesting champion. Um, provides a totally different dynamic um, than a lot of other tanks like Gragas, like Mundo, who are more about kind of this disruption, I guess. Singed is about a similar disruption but he kind of does his own thing uh, a little bit more. So um, we'll see what bad vibes or Yoey wants to take into the top lane against this Singe as well. And it looks like it will be the Cho'Gath locked in to finish off the draft. So all in all, I, I do really like the composition that Iconic has been able to put together here with the Karma um, pairing really, really well alongside the Olaf, um, as well as the Aphilios and Lulu, just really working to speed up on those primary carry champions and try to get into the back line and, and disrupt what this Zarian Ziggs are going to want to do. So even though Iconic is certainly the champion not or sorry the team that's not that's favored to lose tonight i like what they've been able to put together in this game one draft yeah this is an actually pretty interesting composition here you have the olaf uh and the aphelios who are playing alongside double supports um and, and this can get pretty dangerous if this olaf can get ahead at all it, it it's gonna be you know pretty disastrous for goldfish here they do have some decent peel but obviously with that olaf ultimate it's gonna just delete all sorts of cc from the enemy team you have alistar knockups you have fling from singe ziggs uh with his satchel so if olaf is able to get ahead in this game i mean iconic could easily run this over but i mean looking at the other side there are a lot of threats to get onto this aphelios yeah, there certainly are, and the Singed is kind of the biggest one among them, right? Like, you know, there's not really much um, that Iconic Severance will able to be able to do short of um, maybe like a Karma um, Root or something like that that will absolutely stop Singed. I guess also the Cho'Gath knockup as well. Um, but with that said, I mean, kind of the speed-ups that Karma and Lulu will be able to provide as well as the wild growth should be able to keep the Aphilios alive. It's just a question of how strong some of these picks get in the early game. So just to echo kind of what you said, Ride Chance, I think that this Olaf versus Diana matchup is going to be extremely important, really, really big here for Mossy to be able to get his team ahead and um, on the Diana and not allow Hunter Wolf steal on this Olaf to be able to run the early game. So that's going to be something that I'm going to be watching. And I mean, just kind of zooming out a little bit as well, Goldfish Gaming, they are 3-0 in their matches so far they've yet to drop a single game they also haven't necessarily been tested that heavily iconic severance on the other hand they're sitting at one and two they're four and four in their games one of those is an ff victory though so losing a little bit more than they're winning but they should be the biggest test for goldfish so far and um, i'm excited to see what goldfish can do if they do start to fall behind in this early game because we've seen them be so successful as a team such far and i don't know that their ability to come back um, from some early game challenges has been tested yet and i'm excited to see if iconic can handle that tonight as interestingly enough oh. here we still could get some trades but we are seeing the lulu locked into the mid lane so um certainly not not kind of what we expect in this meta i feel like right now ride chains but that's what we're gonna get yeah this is very interesting to me um and, and i know you talked about you know what happens if goldfish gets behind in this early game and i think that just with the nature of olaf as a champion that is very likely what uh, Iconic Severance wants to play around um, with this team composition. And, you know, I was thinking about the Karma and Olaf 2v2, and it seems it seems okay, you know? Like, you have the sh you have big shields and speed up, move speed, all that stuff, um, and, and a slow as well, so that Olaf can just kind of gap close and get to the target. But looking at Lulu and Olaf instead, it, it's kind of a similar thing where... Lulu is just going to be buffing him even more. Yeah, maybe the shielding is and is you oh. know not going to be as present, but okay. Well, they swapped <laughs> trolling. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, okay. In past, metas, in past metas, it would make a lot of sense. Like years ago, like we saw lots of Lulu mid before it just kind of got nerfed into the ground. Um, and, you know, Karma more in that support role. And certainly we've seen a lot of Karma support, but that was just a little bit surprising, just given I feel like Karma's on the wave clear at the very least, yeah. kind of scales a little bit better than the, the Lulu. So I, I do like that adjustment. But I also like that they're using the champ select to do a little trickery as well, just to keep. Um, 
keep goldfish on their toes. But then again, I don't really know what runes or anything people are going to switch for Karma versus Lulu, um, especially if you're playing the Zeri matchup because it's pretty much doing the exact same thing. So. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of playing around lanes and, and figuring out like, okay, well, yeah, like you said, Lulu is not going to have as much wave clear as the Karma. And that's another reason why I was kind of a little more iffy on the Lulu Olaf TV2 rather than the Karma Olaf TV2 because Zeri is pretty much going to be first to that play. Zeri would be pretty much first to that play every time, and that's not really the optimal if you're iconic. But uh, it will be interesting to see here, and... I, I'm I'm very excited to see actually what goes on in this early game because I think the early game is going to determine what actually happens uh, in this game. Absolutely, and you know I I see people talking about this in the chat as well coming into the matchup. Absolutely favoring Goldfish Gaming, but after seeing these team comps, you know I'm ready for Iconic to give them a run for their money in game one, and I think it should be a close game. So I'm excited to get into it soon. It'll be a close game indeed here as we are now in this spectator delay for competitive integrity. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be back in a few short minutes onto the rift for game number one between Goldfish Gaming and Iconic Severance. So don't go anywhere because we'll be right back. Everybody panic. Hold on. I'm about to say something really cool. Three, 41, nine, and lift off! No one dies screaming without me. I feel like I forgot to shoot something. You're starting to bore me. She's such a loser, always ready to cry. Da, 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 da. Ah, come on. What's the worst that could happen?
And we are on to the rift for game number one between Goldfish Gaming and Iconic Severance. For Goldfish Gaming on the blue side, Peanut on Singe in the top lane, Mossy on Diana in the jungle, Akami Hayazo on Zeri in the mid lane, and Dirt 212 and Light Genesis rounding out the bottom lane with the Ziggs and the Alistar. And on the red side, we got Iconic Severance. We got Yoey in the top lane with the Cho'Gath, Hunter Wolf Steel on the Olaf, Tali in the mid lane on the Karma. We got Farachi with the affilios and expressive finally rounding it out with the lulu in the bottom lane and both teams just taking a safe five point kind of start but interestingly enough we do see some wards in the top side river we are going to see them pinged out looks like uh hunter wolf steel might have been spotted there but is going to reset towards towards this bottom side and with mossy doing the same thing it looks like we should have mirrored starts from both junglers here to start the game and you know talking a little bit about you know we've talked a lot about the early game but reflecting a little bit on the scaling of these teams i think both of these teams have really heavy scaling um both surrounding the zeri um as well as the affilios but as the game goes on i definitely start to favor um, what Iconic Severance has put together here, just because we know that this double enchanter often scales so incredibly hard. So excited to see, you know, if Hunter Wolf Steel can get them ahead early and if they can kind of continue to transition that throughout the game. It will definitely be interesting to see um, just as the scaling comes through. We know that Zeri is a beast when it comes to the late game. We know that uh, Ziggs is also going to be able to pump out a lot of damage here. And I do want to mention, I didn't say anything about this, but in this top lane, Peanut on the Singe not opting to go for the proxy level one, which is very, very interesting. A lot of the times this is what we're seeing from, you know, Singe players is they're going to go in, they're going to go in between the enemy towers and they're going to be taking that wave. Um, at least the first or, you know, first couple yeah. waves and then back for like a dark seal or something of that nature. But not going to see that today. Early dark, uh, early level two, actually, for the iconic bottom lane. But it looks like nothing of the sorts will uh, end up coming out of that. Yeah, and I wonder if it's just a little bit of respect, possibly, for um, Hunter Wolfsteel on this Olaf and kind of the early game power that it can bring. As we look at it right now, it looks like, you know, Olaf already fourth camp done, um, and it looks like Mossy is going to end up skipping his wolves just to be able to keep up with the pathing of this Olaf. So um, that er the early game prowess of this champion, I mean, you really can't stop him from uh, clearing fast in the early game. Pretty much the best in the business at doing that. So we'll see if he's able to translate that as he's already cleared his red going over to the Krugs and there's not you know peanut has done a nice job here with the wave in the top lane i'll say because there's no ban or sorry not no ban uh no gank whatsoever um to be had but that will mean some scuttle priority for iconic early on here as well um and as moss is going to run over to that we might see a little bit of a confrontation between these two junglers here yeah, I would definitely want to see Tali get this mid lane pushed up here. And actually, Hunter Wolfsteel is showing on the ward taking it. So that's going to be the first crab going over to Mossy in a lane where we didn't really have Pryo. And, or in a situation where we didn't really have Pryo in either of the lanes. Obviously, Mossy looking for that double crab. Going to just run right through mid lane and should have both of these crabs in this early game. Which is uh, going to be nice feeling for the Diana, especially into Olaf. Yeah, and, you know, so we are going to see Karma and Olaf running down here. But look at these lanes just playing really, really well behind their jungler for Goldfish. Not being vulnerable to ganks in the solo lane and then covering Mossy down here. Yeah, here we go. Maybe a fight coming through here as Light's Genesis will have to flash away from that Karma rune. And, and this is really surprising. Actually, look, Hunter was able to secure the crab away. So it actually ends up not being that bad. And you get to burn the, uh, the enemy support's flash if you're uh, Iconic Severance. Yeah, that does end up being good for Iconic Severance. I was going to say, if the Scuttle Crab doesn't end up going over to the Olaf, it's actually, I think, not the best for them. Um, you know, it's hard to say what the value of Light's Genesis fl is flashes um, at this point, just because they haven't been able to take advantage of it. Bot but Karma did have to roam, which cost quite a few CS, but bot lane. Yeah, Farachi could be in trouble here as uh, they're turning it back onto Light's Genesis. No flash on the Alistair here, but a nice satchel from the Ziggs is going to buy some time and some distance. Expressive now in danger, has to flash away to safety, but Mossy is going to flash right after him. We'll see if they have the damage here as the slow is going to come through onto Dirt and Mossy, but the Crescent strikes and the bombs are flying, and First Blood's going to go over to Dirt. Yep. A nice trade here from Peanut as well, able to flip Yoey under the turret. So, you know, flash or no flash, Light's Genesis is able to get in there and get the engage, and Farachi does survive, but is going to have to blow both summoner spells so far. 
Um, and that's going to be a nice pickup for Dirt early on. It looks like they were trying to translate it to the Dragon, but Hunter Wolf Steel, will, Steel is here. Lulu on yeah. his way. I don't know if this is actually going to work, um, but it looks like they do have the numbers so far. So this Dragon, about 1k. Hunter Wolf Steel trying to get in the pit here and only oh. have the damage. Yes, he does have the smite going. His light stance is going to engage in. Headbutt pulverizes one for one so far as now Masi is going in. It's three versus two in favor of Goldfish Gaming here as Expressive is going to get zapped down by the laser and Tali is next on the table here. The bullets are flying and Okami is running for the hills. Tali has to flash away to safety but Okami follows it with the flash under the tower. A double kill comes through for the Zeri and she is feeling charged up. Now in the top lane though as Pina could be in trouble here to get the flip over the air but the flash auto is enough to take him down and winning in the top lane is iconic, but all the rest of the map belongs to Goldfish. Yeah, so Goldfish is pretty clean outside. You know, the rest of the map, I mean, outside of, I guess, getting outsmited on the Dragon, um, which is not ideal in any way. Um, but still, we do see Hunter Wolfsteel just, you know, doing really well beyond just stealing the Dragon is going to be up in CS. So that is a bright spot still for Iconic. Um, Yoi as well in the top lane, picking up a soul kill that I really don't think that Peanut needed to go away. It seemed like he kind of opt into that. So... Um, you know, ni nice though to see that coming in mostly for the Zeri. Um, picking up multiple kills early on is going to be really big. Also has that CS lead. And, you know, normally we I, I do think of the Karma as something that should be able to be a little bit more dominant in lane early on. Just honestly really annoying um, to go up against. So for Zeri to be able to come out um, pretty heavily on top in this lane so far, I think is a big win for Goldfish um, in this early laning phase. Definitely a big win for Goldfish indeed here, and you can see now Akami might be in trouble as the rest of the team Should are trying rooted. to address in this mid lane. The Root's coming through here, but the dash is not enough to take him out. Ragnarok is popped and the axes are going to fly now as Okami has to run for the hills. It's not the dash available, and the shutdown will go over to Tally. The last tower shot, not enough damage to take down the Olaf, and Iconic gets away with it right there. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of a preview for me. As Masi may be looking to go in, but that's kind of a preview for me about what you need to be worried about in this game if you're Goldfish Gaming, and it's just... Oh, Lights Genesis. What the heck's Flash? But yeah, that's probably more. looked good, looked exciting. Um, but yeah, no, I think that starts to get a little bit concerning because of, you know, the engage that they do have just to be able to run down Okami Hiyazo. If you're already, if they're already able to tank up these turrets at just seven minutes in, it's definitely, it's going to get a lot harder as the game continues to go on. And so, it's, you know, it starts to get a little bit concerning if you are Dirt or Okami Hiyazo. Obviously, Zeri is a champion that has a lot of mobility um, for a marksman character, um, but you know, once that E is on cooldown, starts to get a lot more vulnerable. And so I'd like to see Hunter Wolfsteel continue those ganks into the mid lane, especially as long as Okami splashes down here. And he says this pushed up as he is right now as well. Yeah, I mean, I think this wave has to reset anyway. Um, so yeah, Okami does want to get that in. That could have been, like you said, a good, a, a nice opportunity for a, a gank. But for luckily for Okami... You have uh, Lights, Lights Genesis in the area, clearing out some pink wards, trying to gain some control back for your mid laner in this river. And I think Hunter is just on the the uh, Rift Herald right here, but this is going to get spotted up by Mossy, and this is a level 7 Olaf. You do not want to fight this guy at all here. Now we're going to get the 1v1. The Axe are going a little bit, Aaron, but the Moonfall is going to come down. That's a lot of damage, but not enough here, as it's going to be a 1 for 1 so far. Okami now has Tali on the mind. As now Expressive makes their way into the play. And Yoey did have the lane priority, so they will be first to the roam. But now Light Chance is going out to Tali. The Ignite's going to take down here as the sun comes through. This should be another kill for Okami, but the Polymorph is going to buy some time. It's not enough, though, as Tali will go wow. down. And Expressive is just next on the table. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, because Okami is coming for you. Double kill for the Zeri, and this Rift Herald should be theirs now. Yeah, Mossy donates a kill over to the side of the Olaf, but it does not matter because Okami is here. He doesn't need the speed ups like the side of the carries for uh, for Iconic Severance and just picking up two more kills. I really love that Light's Genesis was so intentional in handing over those kills there as Peanut is going to go pretty low, oh. but Yoey's 1v4. In the middle of four. Those are not favorable numbers at all here. That kill is going to be gifted over to Okami yet again now six and one on the Zeri as now Hunter has to get burn the ghost to get away we'll get yeah, out safe you know comparatively down in this bottom lane as well it is going to be dirt 212 left up just 1v1 against Farachi and really that's just your that's really your dream if you're a Ziggs right you know you're so good at just 
farming those minions basically that's your entire job this game so has been able to push farachi under turret and was able to pick up a plate there as well uh oh but mid lane Ali, no stepping a bit too far forward and the engage comes through the stun is there enough damage the heal is pretty massive from that mantra w and tali gets away with it somehow yeah, Tali is going to get away with it and is going to have the flash back up in just a moment as well. But can we, you know, we can talk about how the choice of expressive to go for this Lulu has had a, oh, a dragon still up. But it has had a consequence because they have no pressure in this bot lane. Yeah, and here we go. We're going to get a 3v3 on this dragon. It's going to be wild as Mossy's going to go in. Moonfall's going to find one as it's already two for zero in favor of Goldfish Gaming and the dragon is next that's going to be going over to them here and even up the dragon count and you know more action in this top lane as peanut and yoey are just scrapping it out gonna get that flip under the tower and the ghost is going to be popped as well as that singe ultimate as now Ooh. peanut is running in circles a nice sidestep another flip back and this looks really really grim for yoey here as the damage comes through he is taken with the poison and that's going to be a solo kill for peanut yeah, and Peanut definitely making us understand why he chose to take this singed pick. Looking super strong, even though he died 1v1 earlier against the Cho'Gath. Um, also seeing some of this synergy be between uh, the Rift Herald and Ziggs, um, which is something that was huge last season. But we haven't seen quite as much Ziggs, you know, at least in professional play this season so far. But that first turret before turret plates have fallen um, is going to be a huge donation of gold into the pocket of Ziggs, who's going to be stacking mana. Um, um, between that tier as well as the lost chapter so um you know now being able to move ziggs potentially into um that mid lane to continue to clear things out is just you know it's kind of everything as scheduled for goldfish and already almost 6k up this early in the game as well lights genesis on this crazy roam just sitting in the bush hunter gonna get flipped back stunned up and there's gonna be some action going on here but hunter is just gonna be able to walk it out there's not enough damage with the Alistar in the Singed to uh, out damage the Olaf sustain. So Hunter's okay for the time being. And yeah, like you said, you know, you definitely want to get the Ziggs into this mid lane to just crack away at these tower plates. You still have a minute and a half to get these plates down. And there's a lot of opportunity for gold here. And just to add to this lead that uh, Goldfish already has. Yeah, Lights. Lights Genesis is just so obnoxious for the solo laners right now. As Okami's yeah. still just trying to bait him in. Has just been able to sit mid lane as well as top lane, and now Dirt not quite caught out. Masi also. <laughs> yeah, All here we right. go. It's a lot of, there's a lot of people around this dragon here. Nice usage of the satchel charge to uh, get rid of any danger by Dirt there, and with two members strong pushing in this top lane, it's going to be more plates going over to Goldfish here. One already is going to go down, and Yoey could just straight die here. It does have the uh, the ultimate available if they want to go for it. Another thing I'm seeing is the Kraken build coming out for Okami on the Zeri. A lot of yeah, that's an interesting building, one. Yeah, a lot of people have been building the Triforce, Runons, um, and then you know Titanic into Black Cleaver. However, I believe that that got nerfed on this patch as well. So that's where we're seeing something a little bit different here, but now Light's going in onto Yoey and just, wow, beautifully executed there. A lot of damage coming out from the Zeri, and you can tell that Akami is feeling himself right now. Yeah, they're just handing every single kill to him, and it's absolutely worth it. And here's Hunter Wolfsteel, wants oh something to God. say about it. Hunter's going in with the flash in onto Okami, and Okami's trying to deal the damage, trying to get out, trying oh. to cut it out, and yes, successful on that mission. It's a one for zero now as Okami goes godlike, and yeah, I mean, remember what we said in the champion select here, this Olaf needs to get ahead, and uh, as you can see, that did not happen. That was not the case. Now Tali could be in trouble here as the <laughs> the bomb is flying. Crescent Strike is going to find the last hit there, and Farachi and Pina were also going at it on the other side of the map. Farachi is going to win out on that end, but the top tower will fall, and the gold lead increases to 8,000. Yeah, and I mean, it's just all coming up goldfish right now. There's not much more to say about that. Looking at the gold lead, it is going to be about 8K here at just about 15 minutes. So, you know, a little bit of a one-sided game that we uh, have so far in this one, but that's, that's all right. It just gives goldfish kind of a chance to flex a little bit. And, you know, interestingly enough, I was just going to say, oh, you know, it's the Kraken Slayer first, but it looks like it'll be the Triforce second because of the Sheen, but no, instead it's going to be the Essence Reaver. So definitely showcasing sort of this updated build on Zeri based on the patch. 
Um, and, you know, I think particularly against the lineup that Iconic has put together here, I also like the Kraken Slayer um, because it's got the Cho'Gath as well as the Olaf, who we know are definitely going to build up some defensive resources. So nice, nice sort of adaptation, either whether it be to the meta or just, uh, you know, the situation at hand for Okami and making use of all those resources that have been handed. So at this point, it becomes pretty difficult for Iconic to be able to do anything. I do like that they're sticking together here, though. That's so much damage here as now Lights is going in into the 1v3 and this is a Mega Inferno bomb and it is causing Mega Inferno all the way around. On the other side, Hunter Wolf trying to go down under the tower but Dirt gets a double kill and now it is just absolutely disastrous for Iconic Severance here as Yoey and Pina are trying to go at it again but you know what they say, you can't chase the singe, it's not going to work out for you. Maybe it'll work out here in favor of what? <laughs> Yo, but Farachi just has to run, caught on the wrong side uh -oh. of the map, and we'll just take the take the execute. <laughs> I thought he was inting at first, but then I realized what was going on. I was just like, dude, they've had it. Like they're just like, it's over. No, but I mean, yeah, I, I praise them for sticking together. But the downside of sticking together is you're also playing against Ziggs, so it gives yeah. them the opportunity to just throw up the Mega Inferno bomb or even just the uh, bouncing bombs as well. So. Um, now pushing in on this this turret, and you know, unfortunately too for Iconic, there's just really really good siege here um, on the side of Goldfish between ha mostly just having the Ziggs to be honest. But that that alone allows you to have huge siege potential as this third dragon is up, and it looks like it will be going to the side of Goldfish Gaming. Yeah, and now Goldfish Gaming is just cementing their lead even further here. 10, uh, 11k gold, they got the dragon advantage now. They're up four towers, uh, up a dragon, up two heralds, and, you know, this this should be sort of the beginning of the end here uh, for Goldfish. I imagine that they'll be able to close this one out, or at least start to close this out pretty, uh, pretty easily. Yeah, I agree. I think that there's just not quite enough. The, I mean, the trade-off always to double enchanter um is that if you don't get a until you're at the later stages of the game or Aphilios can be at something like two items you're gonna want two to three items you're also gonna want that on your olaf they simply don't have enough damage right now as they're sitting on a ward <laughs> which okami is gonna make them aware of um and so it just means that you know yeah you have all the shielding to keep your Aphilios and your th um and your olaf alive but if they don't actually have the damage to take down the uh enemy targets um, it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter in the end, and especially with the amount of damage that Okami Hiyazo is packing at this point, they should be able to, you know, zero out Hunter Wolf Steel um, and and Farachi well before they're able to take down the priority targets. So it just at this point comes down for Goldfish being able to control some of the vision in the enemy jungle, which you're seeing Lights Genesis do an excellent job of at this point. Um, and they are going to start to siege onto this bottom side and just look for the fight. Ooh, Lights Genesis going in here. Head but pull with the Moonfall combination is beautiful. And just like that, Expressive is down. Okami going in, using that ultimate, taking down Hunters. One more Q should be enough to take him down, but the Ghost is... So much movement speed, even enough to chase to out chase the the Zeri. One's gonna go down already here, and now Tally is flashing oh. in. Nice usage of the locket by Lights Genesis to keep the mid laner alive. A double kill for Okami, and the Rift Herald in this top lane is gonna be crushing these towers here. As the outer or the inner tower is already down, the charge onto this inhibitor tower will fall as well here. Onto the inhibs we go. As Lights just wants some more expressive. Oh. Has to burn in that wild growth to save himself here as the Herald. Shelly is still fighting. Will finally get smited down by Hunter. But the base has been cracked open. Yeah, and meanwhile, that's also just 4v5 completely the entire time as Peanut is still over on the bottom side taking down this turret. Looks like he should almost be able to finish it. We'll be able to finish it off now. So the gold lead just yet ever expanding. And in about 30 seconds, the Baron's going to come up. I'm going to bet that right now Goldfish will be going back to spend all of their resources and will probably start to set up. Well, they already have really have vision set up around there, but s continue to set up the split push from Peanut in the bottom lane while they maybe um, pressure this mid lane into the Baron. And they are going to have some pings coming down here um, too. So I would anticipate maybe Peanut looking for a recall here and then he'll probably... Either run and join the team or run bot lane with the teleport ready. And either way, just will be able to respond. So pretty much having everything that they want from Goldfish. 
Uh oh, Okami. Okami's going in again here. Expressive is just absolutely one shotted already. As now Farachi has to run for the hills. The Mega Inferno bomb with the damage combination of Mozzie flashing forward, and that's going to be two down already. The bottom lane is gone. Mid laner is the next on the table as Tali will fall as well here. And there's only two members left for Iconic. The rest of Goldfish is pushing down the base here as Lights is going to tank the tower up just to keep this minion wave alive. And I do like this play a lot here. I think it's very smart because it does give the opportunity for an absolute end here. As now Masi is going to go in onto Hunter. Silenced up here. A lot of CC comes down. It's, will go gold and try to buy some time as Hunter should be able to take him down. The Ragnarok is going to be popped now as he is running down trying to deal the damage. His Expressive is here to buff him up and now Okami is back into the fight. One goes down already. As Okami goes legendary, gets the double kill for themselves here, and this should be the end of the game as Expressive will fall. The triple kill for Okami as he is going under the tower, will get shut down, and that's a 1k to Faraji, but it does not matter at all here because it is only Tally alive, and I guess the wave is cleared, so Iconic lives another day. Yeah, they won't be able to end the game here, so pretty close to being able to end. Looks like Goldfish maybe just got a little bit sloppy there, as it looks like Tali will be able to uh, defend all of the turrets here. So um, I guess you give it to Goldfish for being able to defend, just able to, um, you know, delay a few more seconds here, as we will see the wave crashing onto bot side, and... Uh, there is going to be another dragon, so, you know, I guess Goldfish, to credit them, you know, there's no point in, you know, shoving everyone under the turret and forcing it such that they die, but it looks like the in, the Nexus turret is going to die either way. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to throw the game here. You're so far ahead, you can just literally back, spend the thousands of gold that you just got by killing the entire team four times, and then, you know, come back and, <laughs> and end the game uh, pretty cleanly here. I would like to mention, though, Black Cleaver is picked up here for... Okami and I haven't seen that that much with the crypt build but I mean I, I don't know if it's I don't really know if it's right or wrong I haven't seen the crypt build much to be fair but it does make a lot of sense I mean that black cleaver fully stacks with the Q from Zeri so I like it a lot here oh a beautiful engage coming through from lights Genesis and this is gonna be it here yo he cut, gets caught in the moonfall is Olaf it's just gonna die again here as peanut goes on a killing spree expressive is gonna get one shotted by Okami and yeah this looks like it is gonna be the end here. This Goldfish think... gaming pushing in. I mean, they have double. They have two waves yeah. of, of supers coming in here, and no. the Zig Satchel. So It'll certainly, be the end. they should. Okay, I... miss time Satchel. It's okay. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that here. Is now the super minions have arrived. Tally and Farachi versus the world. Never mind. I guess it's just Farachi versus the world. <laughs> I'm just trying to live, trying to kite out Peanut. But yeah, I mean, the game is just gonna fall as the Nexus. The game is gonna be over as the Nexus will fall here as uh, Goldfish Gaming is going to take one in relatively commanding fashion. Yeah, they absolutely will. And, you know, they were always going to end the game at, there at the end. But I was just going to say, I don't really think it mattered what Okami Hiazo chose to spend his gold on by that point in the game. He could buy Black Cleaver. He could buy Luden's Echo. I think he could buy whatever he wants because, you know, there he's just so dominant at this point with the amount of gold that was in his pocket. 17 kills. When it all is said and done from the Zeri. So now with Iconic switching over to the blue side uh, for game two, I would like to see them maybe deny um, that Zeri as well as possibly the Ziggs as well away, whether it comes through picking it yourself or through the ban phase. So Iconic really going to have to go back um, to the drawing board with their drafts a little bit here, and we'll see if they can bring us something a little bit stronger in game two. I honestly don't really have much more to say than that because Goldfish showed us that they're just a much stronger team in that game one, and Iconic's really going to have to put out a statement in game two to turn that, turn that thought around for me. Yeah, absolutely. Goldfish showing that they are meant to be here at the top of the leaderboards, ending that game with a 17,000 gold lead. We're going to take a short break, but we will be back soon for the pick ban of game number two between Goldfish Gaming and Iconic Severance. Will Goldfish Gaming be able to take it into a fashion, or will Iconic bring it to a game three? We'll be back to find out, so don't go anywhere.
And we are back for the pick and ban for game number two between Iconic Severance and Goldfish Gaming. Goldfish up 1-0 in the series and uh, going to be banning out the Jinx and the Morgana. Iconic taking away the Mundo, the Vlad, and of course, the Zeri that we saw in game number one from Okami. Yeah, and certainly not ideal to be banning Zeri on blue side um, because... You, you know, Zeri, really strong champion. You should probably be able to play it on your team so that you're not forced with your hand here. And with Aphilios being picked up by Iconic Severance, I would anticipate that Goldfish is probably going to go with the Ziggs here. Um, the Thresh has been really a classic pairing for them alongside it. So it is going to be Dirt 2-1-2 on the Ziggs again, baby, going up against the Aphilios. And I mean, I really just don't like giving that over. I mean, I guess Ziggs wasn't like the root of the problem, um, but I don't really know why goldfish would be able to play that again when it totally shut down iconic's affilios in the game before um so interesting choice here from iconic to not ban that one out when you pretty much know the other team's going to take it but um i guess that they just think they have a better plan this time and you know i will say even though thresh counters leona at least with leona being locked in it you can threaten zigs in a 2v1 whereas last game they weren't able to do that whatsoever which just um allowed the alistar to roam around the map everywhere wreaking havoc and so they are going to at least be able to prevent that from happening again in game two yeah i mean i don't know it's it's definitely an odd pick here um like you said counter picking leona into thresh i'm not the biggest fan of that play i'm also not the biggest fan of just like trying to run back this bottom lane that like didn't win at all in game if two thresh isn't there I mean, game if one. thresh isn't there it's fine it can't be a counter pick if thresh isn't actually in the lane I mean. so if we get as much roaming <laughs> as we did in game one but i don't think we will but poppy is an interesting champion i mean poppy locked in probably likely to go into the jungle it could go into the top lane too i think it would be interesting to see peanut show that champion since that he has been the most limited for goldfish when it comes to champion pool that he has been able to display so far um but so far in this season we've seen poppy um be most popular in the um jungle role um seeing a lot of people pick that one up it has fallen off a, a little bit in the past couple patches but i also know that mossy is an extremely um versatile jungler kind of has one of those champion oceans so i know that he does play this pick and it might even be that it's still a flex um going into this second round of bands as we get some mid laners taken away yeah, Ari and Vex taken off the table here. It's pretty standard. I mean, I think this is exactly what we saw in game number one, um, or at least in the draft from number one. Victor is going to be a new ban. Also, Akshon, um, you know, for the second two mid lane bans that we're seeing. But, I mean, Goldfish with this blind pick, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can pick here. I would imagine that they're going to just pick some like random top laner for, like for peanut, <laughs> like singed yeah. or something again. Yeah, singed Gragas is open as well. So lots of things that are left on the table here. And then I think Okami getting the counter pick based on the performance that we saw in game one makes a lot of sense. Um, and, it, and it will actually be the poppy probably going into the top lane, unless it's Lee Sin top, which, you know, I know midway through last season definitely found some popularity, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it will probably be poppy into the top lane. So Okami getting the counter pick again and just personally i don't really like the strategy of banning out you know it looks like four champions away from the from okami in the mid lane just because this i think this player has the most solo queue games out of any um cc indiv individual starter in the ccs so far so just has a massive champion pool sing similar to um, mossy in the jungle as well um, and Syndra locked in, looks like maybe hovering the set to go alongside it as the other solo laner, which would match into the Poppy. You know, Poppy right now in the top lane, honestly, I'm, you know, I know what Poppy does and what Poppy kind of used to bring um, in the top lane, which is just a lot of CC, a lot of lockdown and a pretty safe laning phase. Um, I, I would guess that it pretty much brings similar things right now. The one thing that I will say about Poppy is her W is not getting a lot of uh, utility in this draft, I guess probably against... Um, Leona, it's a little bit helpful, but other than that, not very many dashes, but, you know, Poppy's st still pretty much good in every situation, as Kaisa is being hovered, this has kind of been Okami Hiazo special in the mid lane, likes to build this one with that um, hybrid kind of Nashers build, and it will be the second marksman in the mid lane in a row for Okami Hiazo on Goldfish Gaming. This is very interesting. Um, there's a lot going on in this in this games. Yep. Very, very crazy. Um, yeah, I did do some research here, and Okami has uh, 309 solo queue games this season Ooh. so far, which is 
a respectable. I mean, that's a good amount. That is a good amount indeed. And first we saw the Zeri. This time we're gonna see the uh, the Kaisa. So I'm I'm kind of excited here. I, I you, it's not often that you see you know these picks in the mid lane as frequently as we are today. Though I do kind of fear for Kaisa into uh, Syndra. Yeah, it definitely seems like it would be a really bad matchup, um, but I feel like after that first game, probably Okami maybe, you know, feeling himself a little bit, feeling confident to go into this. Fun fact, the first uh, the first um, match that I ever uh, ever casted was for the CCS, and it had Goldfish Gaming, and Okami definitely played Kaisa in that game as well, so nice little throwback for me. Um, in terms of that, but I agree with you. Like in the straight up matchup, obviously, when you think about the one v one between Syndra and uh, and Kaisa, it, it you would never think about it going Kaisa's way. But kind of in the context of this series, I wouldn't be surprised if we see um, some success for Okami on this pick. Yeah, and I mean, just off the back of that kind of point and, and the dominance that we saw from Okami in game one, I do want to point there is a little bit of a rank discrepancy in this mid lane. Um, relatively significant, actually, I would say a pretty big, pretty big, uh, rank discrepancy in favor of Okami. I'm not going to say what the rank difference is, but I will say that there is a, a pretty large, pretty large discrepancy in favor of Okami. So obviously feeling, feeling themselves right now in this game two draft, picking that Kaisa and, uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, this will be a banger for sure. Yeah. And I'd always like to think that it's not really a good idea to assume that the enemy team is going to play bad um, and try to play around that with your draft. But at the same time, um, I think that you can, I think it's also good for players to trust in themselves a little bit, especially once they've gotten a taste of the other player um, and can have um, a better opinion of whether or not they think they're going to be able to win in some of these matchups. So, uh, you know, in general, like I said, not something that I explicitly endorse, but I'm not going to knock it until I see it at this point because of the dominance that we've seen out of Goldfish Gaming. So, you know, Goldfish, when we just look at their, even just their match histories right now, I think they got pretty much everything they wanted once again, despite, you know, Iconic being on the blue side this time. They have the Ziggs, they have the Thresh, which is kind of their formula in the bot lane. And then outside of that, they have that tank in the top lane as well. And with the, you know, jungle and mid lane sort of duo being able to carry. So all the pieces of the formula are together. And I would anticipate that we're going to see Goldfish succeed again in this game too. Yeah, I mean, like you said, just to reiterate the point here, um, the Thresh and the Ziggs, the formula for Goldfish in the bottom lane, so far undefeated this season uh, in the CCS on that bot lane combination. So uh, I know Iconic is going to want to try to play spoiler to that in this game. Um, but, I mean, overall, just kind of looking at the compositions as a whole, this it's very interesting. You have a, you have a much more defined front line. Um with a iconic composition with the Leona Trundle and set, obviously, you know, the biggest thing I'm noticing here is just the split push threat from iconic. Uh, I mean, it's going to be pretty hard for anyone to match this Trundle in the side lane, especially, you know, normally you want to send the poppy up there to try to match it, but Trundle is able to just take all the poppy's resistances and like run her down. So it, it might be relatively hard here if uh, Hunter is able to actually get ahead on this Trundle, but then again, it would have been hard last game if Hunter was able to get ahead on the Olaf, so. Yeah, and I think that I, I that's a really good point because I think that the win condition, again, for Iconic comes in that early game, being able to put the Poppy behind Hunter Wolf Seal, kind of enabling that top side of the map. Also, it, hopefully enabling Tali on the Syndra to be able to step forward um, and have priority on that lane because that's what it's going to be dependent on um, to be able to, you know, continually sort of harass this Kaisa as the Syndra should theoretically have the outrange. So I'm excited to see if Hunter Wolf Steel can run it back and have a little bit more success in this game, too. It is going to be interesting to see here. We uh, we are into this competitive integrity spectator delay here, and we're going to take a short break. But first, <clears throat> I do want to shout out our sponsor for the CCS, Pro Comps. Pro Comps is the first of its kind drafting tool aimed for competitive and solo queue play. Pro Comps allows the users live feedback and analysis on drafting, gives them recommendations on picks, notes on matchups, and analysis on the enemy team's win cons. That's everything you want in in, uh, in some solo queue action. So 
These features allow the user to gain an edge on their opponents and improve their drafting skills. Everything you need to be successful in solo queue. Use the code CCS25 for 25% off your first six months. Go get it done. Go get that action. Go get that LP. And we'll be right back for game number two between Goldfish Gaming and Iconic Severance. Hold on. <laughs> I'm about to say something really cool. Three, forty-one, nine, and lift off! No one dies screaming without me. I feel like I forgot to shoot something. You're starting to bore me. She's such a loser, always ready to cry. Da -da -da -da. Ah, come on. What's the worst that could happen? And we are on to the rift for game number two between Goldfish Gaming and Iconic Severance for Goldfish Gaming. This time on the red side, Peanut in the top lane on the Poppy, Masi on Lee Sin in the jungle, Okami on Kaisa in the mid lane, and Dirt and Lights Genesis rounding out the bottom lane with the Ziggs and the Thresh. And this time we got Iconic on the blue side, Yo in the top lane on this set. We got Hunter Wolfsteel on the Trundle in the jungle, Tali on the Syndra in the mid lane, Farachi once again on the Aphilios, and this time Expressive going to be choosing the Leona on the support position. So both teams just kind of going for a very chill level one here. We do see a couple of wards, though, coming out from Goldfish early on, notably um, at some of those entrances, just protecting their jungle. 
And it looks like junglers are going to start on opposite sides of the map this time. So um, we will see a little bit of the switch up early game. Um, but I do like Hunter Wolfsteel pathing theoretically up towards Peanut in this top lane as we kind of called on that to be the lane to watch for early ganking. Um, and I also want to talk about a little bit, you know, Mossy picking up this Lee Sin. Lee Sin isn't something that we've seen necessarily be quite as popular, at least in the CCS as it was last season, but um, Lee Sin definitely a, still a really strong champion. Just one that's a little bit harder to um, pull off some of those combos cleanly um, in comparison to something like a Diana, which is, you know, honestly pretty easy to execute. So I think this is a chance for Mossy to kind of show us his level of mastery on this Lee Sin pick. Yeah, I really like Lee Sin. Ah, never mind. Pause. We're going to get a pause. Pause champ. But uh, yeah, mm. I really like Lee Sin. I think it's a pretty fun champion to play. I think there's a lot of, it's a high skill ceiling. You can do a lot of really cool things really really flashy things um and, and you know mossy who's such a uh, you know a, rel a big name in the ccs has been around for uh since the beginning so definitely something to look forward to on this pocket pick champion yeah definitely um you know we got some shout outs in the chat here from mossy's coach saying that he's a well-known leeson master so um, definitely <laughs> hoping to, you know, see that coming out here, um, in this particular game, um, as we are, you know, continuing to be in this pause, sounds like maybe lights Genesis had to AFK for a moment, not exactly sure why, but, you know, looking in the lane states a little bit early here, um, you know, everybody just looking pretty even at level one, not really that much more to talk about, I guess, in terms of the lane states. Everybody farming pretty much even here. We have one CS lead um, in both the bot and top lane for Goldfish Gaming, though. So we'll see. The lanes if they are over. Continue. Yeah, <laughs> over lane phase over. We got some discussion <laughs> about Detroit going on in the uh, in the player chat here while they're trying to um, also get through a little bit of this time. So we will hopefully get back into oh, it. Oh, we're soon. back. Let's go. Oh, yep, we are going to get back into it. Hopefully, yeah. as the junglers oh, also are packing through. But looks like it's, you know, just kind of frozen. We love Riot here. I mean, they <laughs> resolved the bug uh, in this in this oh. match we see. Yeah, the thing the lineups are equal. Yep, the lineups are equal. So obviously there would be an issue with the unpause instead. <laughs> so Yeah, why make it easy, you know? We why make it easy? There's no reason. Ah, there it is. All right. We have All color right. again. We're back in it. And I also want to touch a little bit on the runes. I'm totally blanking on the name of the rune that Okami took, but um, kind of an interesting choice there. I don't, yeah, first strike. I don't really think that that's what I've seen super typically with Kaisa, um, but might be a little bit, might be something because of the AP um, kind of build, as we do see tier being the start here from Okami, although that's, you know, pretty standard um, no matter oh. what you're going to do. And we're getting more spectator fun here. Level two early from Light's Genesis, though. Oh, Hook is going to land here, and this could be a lot of damage traded over. Yeah, it is here, as Farachi is going to not feel good after that Hook lands and some bombs are thrown at his face. Uh, Peanut taking a little damage up in this top lane, but able to trade it back relatively well here. Does have the grasp to uh, sort of equalize the damage and, and get some of that uh, HP back. But Jungler's on opposite sides of the map right now. You can see Mossy trying to make a play here, but Farashi could be in trouble as the flash forward. Nice usage of the satchel, and this is going to be first blood going over to Dirt. Expressive has to flash out from the next hook that comes through. And again, you know, we see the Goldfish bot lane come out on top. Yeah, Goldfish bot lane with some really smart plays there. Really nice use of the satchel charge by Dirt 212 to be able to knock Farachi back, and they are able to pick up that kill. Oh my gosh, and now here we go, on to Tali. But a nice job getting out there as uh, Masi now has to run away. It would be a 2v2 if they opt to take this, but the health bar is definitely in favor of Iconic so far. And with that, you know, Masi was pushed down into the bottom side, and Hunter is just going to be able to walk into this top side and take away some camps. Yeah, and it will be the flash, though, blown from Tali as we do continue to see Masi here. See, now it's Tali. Q's gonna land as the slow comes forward. Flash through from Okami, and one more otter should be enough. No, it is not. Oceans. As there's no ignite here, and now Hunter is in the area with that pillar. Okami could be in trouble here, but Lights is now 
made their way into this mid lane. A few more autos. Maybe the passive comes through as a Sonic Wave is not enough damage. And both the mid and the jungle from Iconic get out with a sliver of HP. Oh, never mind! As the Void Seeker finds its mark, and Okami will find the kill. Yeah, and that's just a. I think that's just really a lazy recall from Tali because my bet is that it must have been that the minions uh, had sight of him once they crashed it on the turret there. So had he been back, just a few more pixels probably would not have been visible to Okami, um, unless it was a blind W um, by the Kaisa. But I don't think that was the case. Not exactly 100% able to confirm that. But um, either way, um, it will be the teleport forced out early here. Um, from Tali is matched by Okami though, but Okami gonna have a little bit of lane priority and just going for the maximum disrespect build on the Kaiser here, mm. not only starting with the tier, but also going for the cull as well. So showing no fear of the Syndra early on. And, you know, interestingly enough, Syndra, I, I'm not sure if she bought this a after the that most recent back or before this, but picking up the Dark Seal in a lane that, um, you know, she is winning in CS and theoretically should be able to win, um, but, you know, has fallen behind because of the gank doesn't have flash. So interesting pickup. We'll have to see if that one ends up being worth it, but Peanut may be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Peanut able to just run out with the movement speed from that W. And I think the, the kind of thought process of this Dark Seal purchase is one, it's going to help you sustain because of that passive, which makes potions more effective. Um, and then additionally, you know, once you hit level six, it becomes very, very easy to just one shot Kaisa straight up. And I think that, you know, approaching level six is 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 kind of the thought process there for Tali, just basically saying, you know what, I'm going to hit level six soon. Yeah, I got wrecked early. You know, I gave over a free kill, but I will be able to kill him shortly. And, and Pina just relentless on this poppy, just finding so much damage just out of nowhere. Yeah, I, I like what we've seen so far kind of from this Poppy, just having that fancy feet in and out, trying to avoid the face breaker from Set, which is obviously kind of the integral uh, ability in this kit to be able to get that, um, um, to be able to gap close. So um, pretty nice to see him being able to play around this. And, you know, like I said, I, you know, we talked about how the formula here for Goldfish is playing tanks. And, you know, it's been quite a while, I feel like, in League since tanks have been truly OP, but... Certainly, there are enough of these champions in the top oh, lane, but mid lane. Here we go. A nice little play into this mid lane here as Tali is the target. Here we go as three members strong will take him down. Mossy's going to get credit for that kill. And another another death here for the iconic mid laner. Just going to push this Kaisa even farther ahead. We touched on this in the champion select, which is that Tali on this Sintra needs to be able to step up uh very far forward in this lane um, to be able to bully Okami in the way that he would truly like to. Um, and that's dependent on Hunter Wolfsteel being all around this mid lane often and instead it's been Masi who has been here time after time punishing Syndra for stepping so far up um, and perhaps a gank into the top lane. Doesn't look like that's going to happen, but, you know, I really would like to have seen Hunter Wolfshield provide a little bit more backup for his mid laner, especially considering the fact that he hasn't really been present in any other lane so far and also isn't up in CS. So, you know, last last early game, we definitely saw something from this jungler on the Olaf. Didn't end up manifesting itself um, in a big lead, but was able to take some early game objectives. Hasn't been the case so far early, but pings into the top lane. Yeah, not at all here is Hunter Wolf still going in and uh, Showstopper is going to come back here, bring Peanut uh -huh. into the rest of the team. But nice job just using that Poppy ultimate and sending the jungler flying and yeah, uh, that's really one no of the, threat. Yeah, that's one of the huge benefits of Poppy is if you just use your ultimate effectively, you know, there's very, you know, there's not really anything that Hunter Wolf Steel can do to counter that other than, you know, possibly interrupting the ult with the pillar. But um, once Peanut does see that one dropped, he just is going to feel comfortable every single time dropping the ultimate. So even though Yoey has been able to bully, hasn't been able to translate into a kill so far. Yeah, Peanut might look for something here as uh, I think the Haymaker is still on cooldown. But yeah, look at all look at all the people rotating up into this top lane here. Supports and junglers alike. The mid lane prior is in favor. Oh my gosh, is Mossy gonna look for the flash in? Kick onto one here as Trundle will burn that subject onto the poppy to try to get some extra resistances. And now Peanut is in the um, middle. The kill is unfortunately gonna go to expressive. And in the mid lane, a oh. solo kill comes through for Tali, and we're stacking up on that dark seal. 
Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, that uh, everything turns in the favor of Iconic there. You know, when I see Mossy flash and kick, you expect that to mean it's going to be an engage, but instead it looked like Mossy was actually probably trying to call uh, his team off. Um, instead, it was Peanut just, you know, diving, doubling down onto that, diving down um, with the heroic charge on the poppy. Dirt may nice. be in trouble, but... Not he's going to be okay. So um, those are two really critical kills picked up, and you know, on uh, especially um, Tali in the mid lane picking up the straight up one v one onto Okami. It's got to be you know nice for him to feel that after he was really dominated last game, um, and that's what this Syndra needs to be able to do consistently against Kaisa uh, if Iconic wants to be able to come out on top of this matchup. Yeah, I mean, again, just kind of. What I predicted was com coming to fruition there, just able to get that 1v1, and it is so hard to play against Syndra in the 1v1 when she hits level 6, but Showstopper Peanut could be in trouble here, is going to get the push back, and the pillar is nice, but the flash away will be matched by a flash, and the Haymaker coming down over the top will secure Yoey that kill. Yeah, so three kills in a row now, it is still iconic, a little bit down in gold, just because of, um, you know, based a little bit of the CS as well as the kills that... Um, Goldfish has been able to pick up, but you know we like to see Hunter Wolfsteer coming up top to support this top laner. It is going to be set, taking a nice lead here. Should be able to pick up some of the plating with Hunter Wolfsteel, who does have the Rift held available. Power. Peanut does not have teleport, and the dragon is going to be started up, so it should be this whole wow. top lane turret going over to the side of Iconic, and this is the win condition that we touched on, Ride Chains, is getting this set gold in his pocket, um, so he can stack some of this magic resist later on against this heavily magic-oriented comp um, from Goldfish Gaming, so it is pretty much going to plan here despite some early game hiccups from Iconic Severance, and we'll see if they can continue to translate that and throughout the mid as we kind of get into this mid game a little bit and if they can hand goldfish still their first game loss of the season still waiting on them to even drop one single game so we'll see if iconic can translate this strong uh early game start into that finish yeah i mean and and you know the gold lead is only 400 right now so it's really not that impactful um you know this game is still about even obviously with that top lane tower full tower five plates going down is very very impactful and you know now and, and with that play uh yo is over 1000 gold ahead now on peanut so definitely the strong point of the map here for iconic severance you want to play through that as much as you can try to get that lead as high as you as possible here okay mossy looking for a play and and just kind of sending the kick the other way a little bit unfortunate there but um Nonetheless, no yep. casualties so far. The gold lead still about two, about 100 now as it is shrunk even further. So, Yeah, and I mean, something we haven't really talked about so far is scaling. And, you know, I think this Kaisa pick will scale pretty well. Aphilios also obviously scales well. But um, Aphilios hasn't really been the one that's been the beneficiary of the gold so far. It has been more of the solo laners um, in Tali as well as Yoey. Um, and you, are, you oh. pointed out right Chain's rightfully so that the the place where this gold lead exists um mostly for gold or for uh, iconic will be on yoey um and interestingly right now he's down into this bottom lane helping four members strong to push this turret and peanut is just getting free xp and um and do, and damage on those plates there in the top lane looks like he picked up either one or two and so in yoey's absence and dirt doing a nice job to stop the recall as well well oh, now 2v2 in this mid lane here as no mana comes through for Okami. Scout of the Week, or Unleash Power as well, at least, is doing some uh, damage. But both of these low health, low HP members have to flash away. Well, that was a little rough there. Ooh, but the war jump from Masi oh. is proper with the Sonic Wave. Finds the mark and connects on the Tali. will take down the Syndra. And this should give at least a little bit of time for uh, the rest of Goldfish to set up this mid play. Looking for maybe a catch on Expressive here as Expressive... Takes the right way around the wall, but Peanut is on the flank. They're still trying to find this Leona, uh, but instead it looks like they're going to just settle for the blue buff for the time being. Expressive now going in. Zenith Blade nicely blocked out here, and this should be a lot of CC stacked. Laird and the damage follows it up here as now Yoey wants the 1v3. Stun onto 2 here is the nice flash kick. 
brings the team in, but the showstopper will find Peanut into the back line to Haymaker. A big shield doing a lot of damage. A nice flash from Yoey will find Peanut on the back side. Now it's a 2v2 oh. as flying in becomes Okami. And a double kill for the Kaisa for the time being. In the bottom lane, what even happened here is Farachi is burning, but will stay alive. Dirt ends up falling in the 1v1 uh, of bot laners. Yeah, so lots going on all over the map, and it will be a gold lead manifesting itself for Goldfish in the end. But, I, you know, again, a nice showing there for Iconic. They are able to pick up three kills um, that first into the top. And I mean, especially if you consider the fact that Expressive basically inted to start that fight off, um, going in with the Zenith Blade that was just promptly blocked by, um, by Peanut. So... All in all, looks pretty good, and you know, I talked about Farachi not being the beneficiary early game here, is being a, is able to oh. be the beneficiary. Nice stun, the ultimate's available, and will be used there, Kami goes down to the last sphere, and yeah, I mean, I don't know, I, again, I'm just saying, it's so hard to play Kai'Sa into Syndra, I'm not really yeah. sure why. And it doesn't really get easier from here, or at least for quite a while it doesn't, because, you know, that ultimate, you can't you can't dodge out of it as Kaisa, right? You, you can't use the killer instinct to get away from that one, and it doesn't miss. So um, if that stun ever does land from Tali, that will continue to be an area of concern. And, you know, some of these ego picks, um, notably, you know, the Lee Sin that well, is 3-1-3, and three, but especially this Kaisa maybe coming back to bite Goldfish Gaming a little bit here if they can't get focus up and uh, play a little bit better as a five-man unit speaking of that though lots of people mid yeah i think it becomes easier actually for okami to play once that uh once the crown is completed here and you can see true building working on the components for that is about to cash in on the call here in 2cs um and this dragon has spawned i believe it's a hex tech yeah, Hextech Dragon is available and on the map, and Goldfish is first to the play. Should just be able to take this down pretty easily as uh, Hunter cannot get in at all. Look at the snipe oh. from Okami, and another Void Seeker finds the mark. Now Masi looking for Farachi as the Prowler's Claw oh. has been bought and used. As now this could be a bit of a rough situation here as going into the play. Oh my gosh, Masi just finding the one shot onto Expressive, and now Peanut is in trouble using the Blast Cone to get out to safety and Farachi's trying to find the damage oh the Q combination oh. is not enough very very close as Peanut lives with one HP but look at the top, top lane Yogi is running through these towers that's gonna be plus 600 for the iconic top laner and <laughs> lights maybe just in a rough spot here no instead it was a bait as Hunter is in trouble and will fall as Okami's gonna find the credit for that kill and I think that should give him enough gold to buy the actual crown but look at the top lane rift herald spawned up this inhibitor tower will fall and yoey is trying to make his mark haymaker fully stacked is not going to find that much damage the herald will fall as well and peanut will find the kill but either way you know the base cracked open for goldfish yeah base has been cracked open so uh, everything looking pretty good so far for yoey um in the mid lane though you know a little bit different from that as we saw a, a lot of action going down gotta shout out tali has been sniped two times so far by the w from okami he has of this game so has been able to be have show some pretty great mechanics with that one so far now um and interestingly enough we're not gonna see oh. the crown of the shattered queen yet we are gonna see luden's echo instead so you know you thought that that was gonna help it become a little bit easier for um kaisa but not the item choice this time from okami me going for something a little bit more aggressive it looks like wave clear oriented i guess i mean i guess just fully specking into this poke sort of ideology here you have the zigs you have the kaisa you have a lot of potential for poke and, and to poke out in these team fights and uh if okami's hitting i mean which it looks like they are yeah. I, I guess it, it makes sense you know Max, and maxing W second too, so did max out the Q first, but now starting Ooh. to put points in the W, and yeah, we can see why. It does a lot of damage, and that's even against Expressive, Wait. who it shouldn't be the squishiest member of uh, Iconic by far, so. Yeah, I mean, Expressive, to be fair, does not really have any items wow. yet. It has the Vandal Glass and, and a Kindle Gem, but look at this 1v1 in the bottom lane here. <laughs> it's just tank battle, and Peanut is what? the better tank. Poppy, not even close. Yeah, I mean, Peanut's still two-thirds HP. It wasn't even close at all. 
Yeah, and I mean, looking at the gold here, it's, you know, even after that kill, Peanut still um, has less gold overall in this game as than Yoey does. Yoey oh. might have had some in his pocket, but Okami... Has to burn the flash to get away, and this could be disastrous here for Iconic Severance. As a nice job there, canceling Death Sets is going to find the mark on Detali, and one will go down. Expressive is the first casualty. Goldfish Gaming completely taking over the bottom side jungle of Iconic Severance. Taking away the camps. This bottom lane outer tower should fall as well here. Yeah, and if we want to talk about what's sort of still separating these two teams and what is proving to be a little bit of a closer game too, um, it, it's it's largely these wards. I mean, look at the number of wards that are in um, oh. both the top and bottom oh, side. Yes, sir. Tommy. Yes, oh, sir. Oh, my Point God. Speaker. Jay taking it in okami showing the killer instinct and now sitting seven and two on this kaisa and you know i guess i guess the pocket pick is coming to fruition yeah and i mean again it, it kind of shows how you know even in lane when um cindra was able to get some of the lead that we would expect her to get against this kaisa skill does start to sort of win out and sort of even things uh even things out um, as we move a little bit further into the game, both in both of these solo lanes, really, with um, you know both Set as well as Syndra finding some advantages early, but just not able to translate them into anything else once um, there actually are a couple of items on the board for all four of these solo laners from both teams. And Dragon is about to spawn too, so that's going to be the third stack potential here from Goldfish. Yeah, I mean, uh, just looking at how the game is, it should be just a free dragon going over to Goldfish here. I mean, you can see Hunter is trying to get back out on the map. Did have to take that reset, but I mean, just look at the setup here from Goldfish. They're already four members strong in this bottom side river. They have the inside track, and it's going to be so hard for Iconic to get in at all here, especially just because of how much control, and then also the almost 4,000 gold lead, and Peanut is just smashing Yoey in this top lane with the hammer. I mean, that lollipop is feeling real heavy right now. Yeah, is... absolutely doing oh so much. Oh my gosh, what just happened there? It just seemed like Expressive was all of a sudden in, and it's going to be supports traded for the time being. Teleport's coming in here as now Masi's going in, going to find the assassination on the Farachi, and now Hunter is chasing down Okami in the middle of three now as Dirt could be the next target, but instead, Hunter will go oh. down on the other side. Masi falls as well here. So right now it's a three for two in favor of Goldfish Gaming, and they do have the priority on this dragon and should be able to secure themselves a Hextech Soul Point. Yeah. Okay, Okami, looking for more Killer Instinct under the tower. Oh, finds the oh. Void Seeker auto, but it is not enough to take down. But a second Void Seeker comes out of nowhere, <laughs> and Okami is godlike on this Kaisa. Yeah, and you know, also I just want to point out like. You know, in the top lane, I was really focused on kind of the gold and the resources, but it's three levels up right now for um, Peanut. So that is going to make a massive difference, obviously. And then also with Okami just continuing to be an absolute sniper with these Void Seekers from the Kai'Sa. Um, pretty impressive um, seeing this pick and seeing why uh, he was willing to take it. Has now 10 kills. So it doesn't matter if it's Zeri, doesn't matter if it's Kai'Sa, but this man is a problem will not be silenced from goldfish as now it looks like goldfish is going to start to transition some of their vision over to this barren area um as they should be able to you know definitely start to thre threaten taking this one and lights genesis doing what he's done this whole series waiting around in the bush to see <laughs> if ferrari will walk over trying to make some plays and he has been able to make some plays in this series so far you know it's the 0 one and 10 scoreline and this is Jesus. just, this is really sad here in the top lane as <laughs> Showstopper is going to be used onto Pina Yoey for the time being. Lives, but we'll see if this continues as now Pina's going to grab that shield. Masi's going to make his way into the area and Yoey caught between a rock and a hard place. We'll get kicked. We'll get the little sonic wave to the back of the head and that's going to be it. Yoey goes down again. Yeah, going down once again. We are seeing pings out of the Baron here as Farachi is uh, junked extremely low as well, um, likely from the Void Seekers from Okami. So as Okami pushes mid lane, the rest of the team just going to be picking up an easy Baron buff for the squad, it looks like, unless it looks like now they're going to go off of it. They don't know where Hunter Wolfsteel is or they see him prowling through the jungle here. So kind of a split call. 
Yeah, I'm not really sure what the what the call is here, why they don't want to go for this. I mean, the lead is pretty substantial. I don't think there's any way that they can walk in, but Okami and Lights Genesis are looking for that action what? here. Hunter is just some flash. Yeah, Hunter is just kind of dead. He's just gonna walk into the rest of himself. So over the top's gonna find the stun onto only the support as now. Unleash power will secure Lights Janus in the back lines. Expressive just kind of dies over the Ziggs bombs, and Okami's gonna jump in, go golden to buy some time. Yoey is the next target here as Tali will get a flash on, but Okami doesn't have the range to take him down with the Kathian rain. Either way, though, it's only Tali alive. Four for one in favor of Goldfish Gaming, and they're gonna be pushing down this mid lane inhibitor tower, and they're gonna look for the Baron. Yeah, splitting once again, but this time it seems pretty clear that they will be able to get the Baron. Looks like now Pina is going to turn over there as well. And it's going to be everyone onto the Baron. And it was Light's Genesis going out in that exchange, but ultimately not going to be worth it for Iconic as they lose many, many members there. And Hunter Wolfsteel just getting a little bit aggressive, I guess. Um, it's hard to say that because all he was doing was just, you know, farming his own jungle. But at this point in the game, the vision has gotten so extensive for Goldfish that even that is greedy as Blue Buff will go over to Okami. And still about two minutes until the soul. Um, but I would assume that if anything is going to be the last straw in this game, it will be the Hextech soul from Goldfish Gaming um, that they will be able to go for in just a couple of minutes. Um, but first, they got this Baron buff, and, you know, with Ziggs, I talked about last game how strong the Siege is, and they're going to put it to the test likely here. Hunter does not have a jungle. No jungle in this game is Hunter's. It is all in favor of Goldfish. Goldfish owns the entire map right now, besides maybe inside the walls of the base for Iconic. This dragon spawning in a minute. You can already see now what... Uh, this team wants to do they want to play for this dragon you can see five members in this bottom lane setting up getting control getting you know everything they can in this bottom lane and goldfish looking really really strong here showing that hey you know what yeah we didn't play the best teams but we are still a contender onto hunter and hunter just dies instantly now onto yo here is the death sentence will sentence Yoey to death. Okami is legendary as the Void Seekers are flying. Flash hook not going to find the mark here, but we are flashing in anyway. As another goes down, Farachi will fall. As a nice play there from the entire squad of Goldfish Gaming. It's only Tali again. This seems like something that we are already seen just a few minutes ago. And the inhib towers are going to go down. The inhib will fall as well here. Tali versus the world. What do you have when the world needs you most? And we'll see if there's anything. No, there's nothing. As another Void Seeker lands. Okami is on a mission this game. As Hunter is just going to get fountain camp. Spawn camp. Going to just die again. And this is like Stormtroopers. They're going in one by one. <laughs> a double kill comes through here for Okami. And uh, yeah, that is going to do it here. They're literally just fountain camping these guys. The poor team, Iconic, can't even leave their base in dirt, satcheling in. Death Sentence again. Can Light's Genesis miss? I don't think so. Neither can Okami. The Nexus should finally fall here as Goldfish Gaming is just crazy. Yeah, and it is going to be Goldfish Gaming. They will finish out this game too, and it's going to be a dominant 2-0 for Goldfish, who still has yet to drop a game so far in this CCS. This one was a little bit closer early on than the second one, but, you know, all in all, it, it doesn't end up being a close series um, whatsoever with Goldfish just showing us exactly how dominant they are. They also showed quite a bit of versatility in the champions that they're able to play, which we know makes it a nightmare um, to go against in the future. So um, really exciting to see that um, they were able to put that together. Um, and, you know, I honestly don't really have that much more to say. I mean, you know, we talked about the formula here from Goldfish Gaming, getting the Ziggs as well as the Thrash. Um, they pulled that off really well, Ziggs, Alistar in game one, and then, you know, these tanks in the top lane, it just seems to work out, and until that formula is cracked um, by another team, I don't really see any reason for Goldfish to change it up here. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, when you can get every single thing that you want in the draft, Every single game, 
something has to change when you're prepping against this team. You got to be banning out these core picks, you know, a Ziggs, maybe. You got to ban out Zeri or Kaisa. Just pick one of them because, you know, it is it is pretty brutal to play against Okami on these Marksman 80 carries and, you know, uh, dirt on the Ziggs you're so comfortable with. Um, we are going to take a short break here, but we will be back in a few minutes with an interview uh, with Okami from the winning Goldfish squad. So don't go anywhere because you're not going to want to miss this interview. All right, everybody, welcome back. And we are happy to be joined by Okami, the mid laner of Goldfish Gaming, who racked up an insane number of kills. I believe it was, what, I think 34 kills across these first, uh, these two games, um, playing the Zeri as well as the Kaisa. So first of all, thank you so much for joining us, Okami, and we're, we're glad to have you here. Yeah, it's awesome. Very exciting. You know, and I was mentioning uh, to Ride Chains during the cast, actually my first ever cast was a Goldfish Gaming Series last year in CCS, and you and Mossy, I, oh, and Dirt, I guess, I think, um, are all returning onto that roster, but certainly you've seen a lot more success so far in CCS next, or this season, um, and I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about where you, what you, um, what you can say has contributed to this better performance so far this split. Um, yeah, there's there's definitely a few things that would contribute to Goldfish going from the coin flip team to the arguably best team in the league, right? Um, namely, we did a big roster swap. Um, we got we got a coaching staff. Shout out to uh, Zed and Mookie. You guys are great, um, as well as James. Um, but mostly, we got a new top laner and a support. And before we were playing like Viego and like Aatrox in the top lane, which were a lot more like inconsistent kind of exciting Adderall champions that are just like really fun to watch but like very high variance and so when we got in our our resident glue stick sniffer um peanut who just plays mundo and right clicks the enemy team as a tank for us it, it, it's a lot easier for us to draft around um same thing for our support lights genesis who plays uh, these like frontline engage tanks it um really allowed us to like narrow our our play style which is just kind of like Weak side, bot lane, weak side, top lane, felicitate mid lane and jungle to just like ball out every game, right? So this, this play style has really just enabled us to like be so dominant. 
Yeah, absolutely. And just to follow up on that, like, you know, with another question, uh, kind of something that I've noticed throughout your drafts is, you know, they have seen a little bit formulaic, like you said, with sort of those engage champions coming into the support role and then also the tanks in the top lane. So do you feel like this is something that will be, you know, ex obviously, you know, I'm not expecting you to say that your team is going to get screwed or something, but, you know, like, is this something that you think will be exploitable in later drafts? Or do you think that it's more of a strength um, that you found those really specific roles for these players on your team? Uh, it's it's definitely a strength that we have, like this really this really good play style that we found ourselves in. But as you saw in game two, like we have we have a range of play styles. Like there's kind of the joke on our team, like you can never like ban our ban us out. We one of our biggest strengths is how deep our champion pools are. Um, it's it's it never feels good if you're like a three or four champion player and you get banned out, and all of a sudden you're like on Annie for the first time. Like that's you know, you're you're never gonna really enjoy that. And so I know one thing I've worked really hard on is refining my champion pool to make sure that I have backups for backup champions for almost every like uh situation we need. So I always I have like two to three poke champions I play and two to three assassins and two to three like late game hyper carriers, that kind of thing. So, you know, because of that, I think you know, game two we had a little bit of fun. We we got to like the Kaisa mid. It's my niche pocket pick that you know, hopefully we'll get to see a little bit more of later on. But there's there's definitely a lot of depth to Goldfish that teams aren't going to see until they react to our current play style. Yeah, I guess just going off the back of that, I mean, you talked about having such a big champion pool, and I was looking uh, at your OP.GG, and you have a lot of games, 309 games already this season. Uh, can you maybe yeah. talk about how that helps you out or how you can manage to play that like that much and work on your... Uh working in mechanics and stuff like that? Uh, you know, I can can wear it as a badge of honor or I can wear it as a badge of shame that I've played <laughs> that much of this game. But uh, it's up to your viewer discretion. But I definitely think something that comes along with playing that many ranked games, and a lot of them were duoed with my jungler Mossy, so we have a lot of synergy there. But a lot of it comes with matchup knowledge. I feel like my coaches can go, okay, we're fighting this champ. What champs do you want to fight in that? And I can list off three or four. Okay, these are the good matchups. These are the bad matchups. And so we, you know, if we're working our drafts to, facil to facilitate mid lane to do well, I need to be able to know when my champs are like the best pick, right? So um, no shade to Iconic Severance, but there is a very, very low chance that we were going to draft Vladimir in these games against the mid laners that Tali plays. And they just kept banning Vladimir. And it was... You know, like, oh, well, thanks for the the ban, I guess. Like, it, it was it was one of those examples where you weren't really going to pick Vladimir into those champs. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely seemed like some bans kind of just thrown out into the void by Iconic Severance. Like, they just kind of looked at your top plate and uh, banned based on that rather than, you know, anything else. But, you know, you spoke a little bit about matchup knowledge and um, something that we questioned a little bit in the draft in the early game of game two was taking this signature sort of Kaisa that you played. Again, you also played that in the first series I ever casted, I remember, um, into this Syndra. And, you know, me and Raichains talked about how this is kind of a tough matchup. And we did see you get, um, you know, zeroed out at least one or two times here by this Syndra. So can you speak a little bit about that pick into the Syndra and how much of that is you knowing your better than the enemy mid laner um, versus kind of that specific one-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah. Uh, Stitcher is one of those mages that has like a certain level of like lethality and kill potential that, that makes her so scary. It's probably her best aspect. And so locking a, a champion like Kai'Sa, you know, you take first strike, you take teleport, you're buying coal and tier. You don't, you don't want to play the game before 15 minutes. Like you want to get to your items. And once you have your items, you can, you can, grab the game by the throat and do whatever you want but until then you're 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 really just trying to cruise and so Syndra is definitely um a champion I didn't love picking Kaisa into it's it's better into to someone like Twisted Fate or like Corky or something um but I uh I felt confident in the fact that like I could itemize or take my runes in in a way that like if if the Syndra ended up being a problem I could like mitigate it um, I, I felt like the mechanical skill disparity was enough that it wasn't that big a deal. And obviously, I, I overcorrected a few times and got caught out, but it ended up not impacting the matchup enough, and the Kaisa pick like ended up being worth it.
Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the scaling was able to speak for itself in the end of the game as you ended up with 17 kills. So, um, you know, didn't end up being a problem. But, you know, once again, Okami, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you, you know, uh, being here for this post game interview. And um, we're glad that we were able to see you play tonight. Yeah, awesome. And one thing before I go, shout out to Dirt's boy, Robbie C. All right. Thanks. Sounds good. Thank you for that uh, additional shout out as well. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us here on CCS. Head over to CCS2 to catch the end of the Horizon Gaming vs. Grinchy Goons matchup, which is still going on. But until next time, we will be back next week. I've been Elsa the Queen here with Ride Chains. Thank you so much for being here at the CCS. We love you for watching us. Make sure to hit that subs subscribe button as well. And we'll see you next time for CCS Classic Championship Series. Have a good night.